Burke, we all know that you were on the last Celtic squad to bring a title to Boston, but I, I don't know. Your 08 team, they never had a win quite like the one we saw yesterday, the beatdown in Beantown, as we are calling it. The Celtics hosting the Warriors. Danny, it was Jason Tatum celebrating his 26th birthday on this one. Jalen Brown, though, he started off in the zone. Well, I think it's pretty easy to get in the zone when you're not being guarded the way you're normally be, used to being guarded. So they, yeah, they're sagging him. I thought this was an interesting take. Uh, I would have done something different. And obviously, he took advantage. So <laughs> yeah, he's so kind. I would have done something different. Yeah, well, Brown had 19 points in the first quarter, five of nine from three. The Celtics, they were rolling, Ramona. It just wasn't a good night for Steph Curry, who came into the night questionable with that knee inflammation, that knee soreness, and just never really found his shot. The reason why the Warriors believe they have a chance to win is because they still have Steph Curry, but he was not. Steph Curry, the way we know him last Well, night. it was a better night, though, for Jason Tatum. That's what happens. A little birthday magic. Drives makes a tough layoff there. only 26. He's 26 again. Come on. I know. Jason Tatum steps back, nails the three. The Celtics led by 44 at half. The largest halftime lead since the Mavericks' 50-point lead back in 2020. Jalen Brown throws it down. No wonder he's already named player of the week. <laughs> a good Here's Jason. Jason Tatum with the queen, Cassidy Hubberth. Did you think it was going to be this big of a win where you guys led by at least 50 points for most of the game? Uh, no, I didn't. But, uh, you know, I just like the way we came out. I think just our attention to detail, um, how connected we were on the defensive end. Uh, we just we played real physical tonight, and uh, that was big for us. I don't take a lot of threes or for the most part throughout the season because we got enough of that. I get to the paint, and I usually open it up for everybody else. But if you want to dare me to shoot, we can do that too, you know what I mean? I thought it was a little disrespectful. So during their 11 game win streak, the Celtics have now outscored opponents by 243 points. That is the best scoring differential over an 11 game stretch by any team in NBA history. So this comes after the Celtics recorded their third 50 point win of the season on Sunday over the Warriors. That's the most 50 point victories by any team ever in NBA history. We got a whole lot of history. This Celtics. might be the most dominant 11 game streak we have ever seen ever in the history of the game. We just contextualized it with all the stats. But Perk, what are the chances that Boston is putting together one of the greatest regular season teams of all time? And does that matter? It does matter because they established it at, 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 the, at the crib. And so when you think about it, Boston, the Celtics has made Boston a dangerous place to play in in the playoffs. And I can't, I can't, you know, express how much it means to get home court advantage, okay? We saw that with the Denver Nuggets last year. But here's the thing about the Celtics, right? It's simple. It's championship or it's bust when it comes down to this group. This group right here, especially that starting five with Christophe Porzingis in it, is very, very dangerous. And you have to pick your poison. And I think it's going to co solely come down to Christophe Porzingis if the champion, if the Celtics are able to reach their levels of uh, winning the championship, he has to be healthy for the long haul. Yeah, um, I agree. I think home court advantage is important. I just don't think it matters that much regular season. I can't. What the Celtics are doing right now. What the now. Celtics are okay. doing right now. Um, so we've seen this team or so much similar to this team in the past five years, last three years. They went to the finals. They were well. They just weren't mature. So. I can't put them in the same category as the, the Bulls team or the Warriors team until they win a championship or until they show that maturity. Right. And a lot of that comes down to in the playoffs when the game slows down, coaching. Um, I do like Joe Missoula, but I would like to see how he adjusts and how he changes this playoff season and mm -hmm. what, he, what he does. So um, I do like the way they're playing. It does matter, but to me, until you win a championship, I, I can't put you as a historian. I'm going to be that girl too, Danny. I mean, because like to me, like, the, when you have success early, yeah. the, I mean – Jason Tatum is 26. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, we forget how many. Every time you talk to Jason Tatum, he reminds you. Hey, you know, we went to the Eastern Conference Finals when they were just barely in the league. They had just so much success First early league. on. Yeah. With, with him and Jalen Brown. All, they've been to the, the Eastern Conference Finals. They've been to the Finals. They haven't gotten across the finish line yet. But when you have all that success early, you don't. people don't want to hear that you're still young. People don't want to hear why you haven't won yet. They right. just want to see you win. And right now... I mean, we're, I'm an MVP voter. We're all starting to look at that MVP race. Jason Tatum should be at the top of that MVP mountain, right? He's the best player on the best team in the league. 
And yet we still talk about him as like maybe the third or fourth, right, best in that in that race at Jokic and maybe Shea and some of the other players, right. Luca. But why don't we talk about him as the MVP front runner? Because they haven't won yet. Right. Because they've been there so many times and they haven't gotten across the finish line. And he would tell you the same thing. Yeah, but doesn't Jason Tatum, he would be the first person to say that. He would be yeah. the first person to say that I know that we haven't gotten there and I would rather be a champion yep. right now than an MVP. Not to say that I don't want all of that to come together, but he sees the steps that it takes. It really mm -hmm. feels like he's taken a leap in maturity since that story that you wrote, Ramona, mm -hmm. after the 2022 finals when he literally shut himself away in a room <laughs> knowing that he was not the best player on the floor, that he was out played yep. outclassed on the court by Steph Curry and that plagued at him that yeah. ate at him and so I, I'm not saying that I'm putting everything into okay a beat down of a Golden yep. State Warriors team that we're gonna get into in a minute in fact the game that I'm circling is on Thursday when the Nuggets are in town yep. mm -hmm. and that is going to tell me a whole lot because every when you watch the league this year every when I saw the Celtics up close in person I go that's the best team in the league right that's Did the you? most talented team in the league they 100%. should win it this year and then you watch Denver you go Okay, uh, we 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 gotta hold off on right. Denver, but but the Celtics this year, like they have the team, they just have to get across the finish line. I think games like that, those are measuring stick games. Yes, uh, and the maturity is gonna say a lot. Well, how much they've matured when it comes to that postseason, right? And not only the players, but Joe Missoula. Uh, last year they had no business losing to Miami the way they did. Um, this year they have some tough teams in the East that they're gonna face, but. In order for them to beat a Denver, they're yeah. going to need that maturity. Also, I do not like the fact that they lack depth on the bench. Mm. Um, their defensive depth, they all come off the bench, they have Hauser, right. Pritchard, good scorer, shooters, right. uh, Cornette, good rim protector. But defensively, I don't think, I'm not so... Right confident in their bench. We all know rotations shrink in the playoffs, yeah. but you have to get there. You have to get there healthy in order to get over that mountaintop. I Victor Wembanyama led the Spurs to consecutive wins for only the fourth time this season, thanks to another dominant performance. The rookie, he finished with 31 points, 12 rebounds, six assists, six blocks, becoming the first rookie with 25 points, five assists, five blocks in consecutive games since blocks became official since 73, 74. It's safe to say he just don't keep skating. We should, we should just call that the Wemby. Yeah, that's at this point, blocks, it's not a block anymore. Now, it's statistically, it's called a Wemby. Since the start of February, Wemby has increased his assists, block shots, and three-point shooting, averaging a league-best 4.1 blocks per game in this time. He's also... Watch out, everybody, shooting 43% from three. So Kendrick Perkins, I think it's time Seriously? for a little, I know, it's, it's incredible. It's a high clip. I think it's time for a word of the day. It's been a little bit on the tear Victor's been on. What you got? Yeah, you ready for this one, Malika? Never. Yeah. <laughs> what you got? In, in, in Criaba. You know what that is? You know what that is? That's the French word for incredible. Incredible. Yeah, the French word for incredible. And that's what he that's what he's been. That's what he's been over the past over the past, you know, since the All-Star break. When I'm talking about dominating on both ends of the floor, he's been doing just that. And that matchup against Chet a couple of games ago where he dominated when they was back at home. Look, Victor Wembyamba is not only making the case for himself for us being the rookie of the year, that's a for sure. But when it comes to leading the league and blocks, Malika, right now I got Rudy above him, and I know the Spurs stink defensively. But individually, what this young man is doing, God bless America. Yeah, it, it really has been incredible. Uh, he had a stretch. That's thing. actually how you say it. <laughs> in, in the third quarter. Well, I took French classes when Victor was coming into the league. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a couple of French classes. Yeah. And um, there's a stretch in the third quarter, though. He had a three, a block, a steal, and assist all within like a minute. Less, less than a minute. He's yeah. just showing that he's willing to do every single thing. You know this system. You know Greg Popovich. You won a title with the Spurs in 2014. How do you assess the way that he's fitting in with this group and the system? He's doing, obviously, Pop is a genius at, I guess, bringing guys along and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, he's the pro at load management. You know, he took him on, minute restriction, trying to take him off a little bit, but he's helping him develop. Um, but this system, this situation, is a perfect situation for him to grow. You know, any other organization, I don't know if he'd be here. Um, but I said, a lot of people expected great things. Some people thought he'd be Bol Bol. I think he's exceeded my expectations. And not, no disrespect to Bol Bol. He's yeah, a don't, good player. Bol Bol, we don't diss on this show. He's this one of Kevin is, Perkins' is favorite players. Nothing short of, you know, amazing. For a rookie season, he's, he's playing <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, and Creable, however you ever say it. <laughs> good job. But, um, yeah, so Pop has done an amazing job of keeping him, load management, bringing him along slowly yeah. but surely. But most rookies hit a wall. He's taking it up a notch and, and making statements. 
Titans. He's mm -hmm. not only playing well and dominating his matchups, but he's helping them win some games. His usage rate for a rookie is just off the charts. He's getting a lot of reps as the number one guy. But like you said, it's not necessarily leading to winning. It is, though, I think it's a good time for these winning habits to be being built towards the end of his rookie mm -hmm. season because now the Spurs are getting a real idea of what they have and, frankly, what they don't have. They said they're going to be patient building around Victor, but Victor isn't that patient. No. I think the rest of the league has started to understand that now in the best way possible. So what does the timeline look like now? I don't want to hear that word anymore. Patience. Timeline. Mm. Patience. Like, Damian Lillard, when he asked for a trade from Portland, had an interest in going to the Spurs, okay? He had an interest. There was a fascination with Wemby. Wemby hadn't hit the league yet, but there was a fascination with him, and there was a respect for Greg Popovich, and there was, but there was not really any traction on trading for Dane because Victor is so young, and they have a young team, and they want to see that develop. Victor's here. Victor is ready to win, and I, I, I know they have this idea that they're going to take two, three years and find the right core, and they're all going to be on the same timeline, but... I don't know how patient he's going to be because when I watch him play, that man is competitive. He wants to win. And how long do you give him, Malika? Year, uh, two? Ma a year max. Because I, I don't think he wants to sit here and be at the bottom of the lottery standings. He may not be patient, but he'll, he won't have a choice because it's really up to Pop and organization. He's going to have to wait. He has, it's obviously his turn, but he's going to have to wait until they get the pieces they can get for him. Well, there the are players perk? around the league who would love to play with him. What's the space perk? The but, man, Victor don't have to be patient and wait on nothing. <laughs> He's the greatest prospect ever. Look, for the first time, the pressure is on Greg Popovich and the San Antonio Spurs. They better get the pieces around him, man, because this kid is different. He's thinking different. He has an old soul. He's about winning now. He's not trying to lose. For sure. But the maturity in him of learning from Tony and learning from other body, everybody else is around him, David yeah. Robinson, is going to make him – to embrace the patience and he's gonna have to I think be... he embraced the patience longer than he wanted to yes. in terms of the process in to get to where he is now and playing in longer stretches and doing all of that I don't know about pop feeling pressure perk I don't know that, <laughs> I even don't if think that's people possible put pressure on pop I don't think he's felt <laughs> it uh, for a very 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 long time but if anyone can make this organization move at a different pace than they were planning to it's Victor and I, I just yeah. don't see it lasting and I also think like season, I how think. how there's so few rookies in this league. Yep. There's so few young players in this yep. league that have a gravitational pull where veteran players say, I want to play with that guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Victor's one of them. I'm